Stuart Rhodes, leader of the right-wing extremist group, the Oath Keepers, has been found guilty of sedition for his role in the January 6th Capitol attack. The jury returned the guilty verdict after three days of deliberation following a nearly two-month-long trial. Also convicted of sedition was Kelly Meggs, leader of the Oath Keepers Florida chapter. And while three other co-defendants were acquitted on that charge, all five were found guilty of obstruction of an official proceeding. Rhodes and Meggs are the first people to be found guilty of sedition in nearly three decades. They both now face up to 20 years in prison on that charge alone. So, do you think justice was served here? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Kanye West and Kim Kardashian's divorce is finally settled. And despite Kim's $1.8 billion net worth, she's set to get $200,000 a month in child support. Kim is also getting the $4.5 million house Kanye bought next door to her house in Hidden Hills, California. Meanwhile, Ye keeps his $60 million Malibu digs, his Wyoming ranches, his Calabasas acreage, and his homes in Belgium and Chicago. This comes nearly two years after Kim first filed for divorce and following a whole lot of legal stonewalling by Kanye. Do you think we can finally put this saga to rest? Or is there more Kim-Kanye drama still to come? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Will Smith just walked his first red carpet since the infamous slap incident at this year's Oscars. Wow! Smith, alongside his wife Jada Pinkett Smith and his three kids, attended the premiere of his new movie, Emancipation, in Los Angeles Wednesday night. And it sounds like his 10-year ban from Academy Awards events could actually mean something. That's because critics are already touting the Antoine Fuqua-directed movie and its star as contenders for the top prizes. Now, Smith isn't banned from being nominated for or winning Oscars, but industry watchers think his assault on Chris Rock is too fresh to overlook. Let's hope that doesn't spill over to the rest of the film's cast and crew. The hope is that it unlocks compassion and, and empathy on the other side of it. Will the slap affect whether or not you will go see Will Smith's movies? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. PTSD is a terrible thing, but those who suffer from it could soon have something to be ecstatic about. That's because MDMA could soon be available in U.S. hospitals by 2024. This, according to researchers involved in a landmark 2021 trial involving 90 patients with severe PTSD. Incredibly, nearly 90% of them went into remission after taking the drug, accompanied by some therapy. They now plan on submitting a new drug application to the FDA, who they think will approve the plan within six months. PTSD affects roughly 12 million USA adults a year, so this kind of therapy could really make a difference. Do you think this could eventually lead to the legalization of Molly for recreational use, just like what's happening with the pot? Or do you think medical use is as far as it will or should go? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Taking on the rats of New York City is a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. And that someone's gonna get paid. New York just posted a job listening for a director of rodent mitigation, and though the job is serious, the posting is pretty fun. It asked that the ideal candidate should be highly motivated and somewhat bloodthirsty. That said, it acknowledges that it's a high-impact leadership role with one of the most important tasks in city government, keeping the city's rats in check and on notice. Which is probably why it comes with a solid salary range of $120,000 to $170,000 a year. Sounds like a good gig, but do you think anything can be done about the Big Apple's millions of rats? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. How's this for ridiculous? A Florida woman is suing because it took her longer than she expected to make microwave mac and cheese. Amanda Ramirez bought Kraft's Velveeta shells and cheese, which says ready in three and a half minutes on the package. 
But her lawsuit claims that is false and misleading because that's just the microwaving time and doesn't include the extra seconds spent removing the lid and sauce pouch, adding water, and stirring in the cheese powder. It also claims she wouldn't have actually bought the product if she'd, quote, known the truth. Right. Ramirez is asking for at least $5 million in statutory and punitive damages. Unsurprisingly, Kraft Heinz calls the suit frivolous and plans to fight it. Should U.S. courts really waste their time on lawsuits like this? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Identical twins have been awarded one and a half million dollars in damages after they were accused of cheating on a med school exam. In 2016, Medical University of South Carolina claimed Kelly and Kayla Bingham signaled to one another during an important test. Even after the dean cleared them, their reputations were destroyed, eventually leading them to drop out of medical school. They filed a lawsuit and based their defense on how similar they were as twins, testifying that they'd received near identical grades their entire lives. The jury agreed and awarded them the damages. Incidentally, since the twins left med school, they've gone on to become lawyers. What do you think about this award from the jury? Was it fair? Too much? Too little? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The niece of former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie was arrested on Thanksgiving after being kicked off a plane. 25-year-old Shannon Epstein reportedly believed a family seated near her were Latino and asked them if they were smuggling cocaine. She was allegedly irate and was asked to leave the plane and became extremely combative when officers arrived. She's also alleged to have injured six of them, including biting one and kicking another in the groin, all while shouting that they would lose their jobs because she's related to powerful people. A New Jersey Republican stands before you tonight. But so far, they're still employed while she faces 10 charges, including six of battery on a police officer. With these kinds of outbursts becoming more and more common, do you think authorities need to take a harder line? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. What if you threw a big expensive party in the metaverse and nobody came? That's pretty much what happened to the European Union Commission's Foreign Aid Department. It spent over $400,000 on a 24-hour gala, but just six people showed up, and at least one was a journalist only there to cover it. The splashy event promised a DJ and virtual concert venue and was intended to attract young people. Young people the group hoped to engage with about the EU's global gateway development policies. Instead, it turned out to be an embarrassing failure, with people describing the faux venue as digital garbage. Ouch. Mark Zuckerberg says the metaverse is the future of social media and is betting the company's entire future on it. Do you think he's right? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Under Indonesia's new criminal code, sex outside of marriage will be illegal and could cost you up to a year in jail. Also illegal will be adultery and unmarried cohabitating. And to be clear, these laws will apply to locals and tourists. Political and religious expression has also been restricted, leading Human Rights Watch to describe the situation as a huge setback for a country that has tried to portray itself as a modern modern Muslim democracy. Guess I'm taking Bali off my bucket list. So knowing all of this, will it keep you from traveling to Indonesia? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Elon Musk's Neuralink tech company is under federal investigation after hundreds of animals were reportedly killed in experiments. Neuralink is working to develop a brain implant that could do things like let blind people see and help paralyzed people walk again. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. But current and former Neuralink employees allege that Musk has been pushing for testing to go faster at the expense of the animals being tested on. They allege that avoidable mistakes and botched experiments have led to unnecessary suffering and death in many of the test animals. According to Reuters, about 1,500 animals, including mice, pigs, and monkeys, have been killed by Neuralink since 2018. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has now opened an investigation for potential animal welfare violations. 
If the claims are true, should Neuralink be punished? Or is this just the price that needs to be paid to improve the lives of humans? Let us know what you think in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The quarterfinals are set for the World Cup. On Friday, we've got Croatia versus Brazil at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by the Netherlands versus Argentina at 2. Then on Saturday, it's Morocco versus Portugal and England versus France. Rides the challenge of Sabali! It's three! Saka. And hey, let's take a second to appreciate all the history Morocco is making and could still make. With Morocco's win in penalties over Spain, the Atlas Lions became the first Arab team in World Cup history to make it this far. And at the first World Cup held in the Middle East, no less. You may also have noticed that Morocco is the only team left from outside Europe and South America. That also means they're a win away from being the first ever African team to make a World Cup semi-final. Lots on the line, which makes for some very exciting matches coming up. Which two teams do you think are going to face each other in the final? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. As we know, the Time Person of the Year isn't always a good person, but this year it's the best person. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. It's hard to think of anyone who's more of a hero to the world these days, a leader who's literally in the trenches with his people during their almost year-long war with Russia. And as the article accompanying the selection makes clear, not only is Ukraine overperforming in the actual war, Zelensky is clearly winning the war of words, not to mention our hearts. The other honors handed out by Time include the Women of Iran as Heroes of the Year, Aaron Judge as Athlete of the Year, Blackpink as Entertainer of the Year, and Michelle Yeoh as Icon of the Year. Do you agree with these picks? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Google has released its Year in Search 2022, and when it came to the top trending searches in America, for better or worse, election results finished second while Wordle finished first. As for the top trending searched people of the year, seems we were drawn to the salacious. Johnny Depp was first, Amber Heard was third, and Will Smith was the meat in their celebrity dirt sandwich. The fourth and fifth spots went to Antonio Brown and Carrie Lake. Nuff said. And in what may best sum up the year, America's top three near me searches were gas prices, at home COVID test, and voting. Does that sound about right to you? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. A new AI chatbot is taking the internet by storm. It's called ChatGPT and it's able to hold some pretty convincing conversations. Real conversations, not just Q&A and customer service type dialogue. What is a woman? A woman is an adult human female. The neural network it uses can actually create content rather than just parrot information it's picked up elsewhere. For example, it could come up with its own answer to a what if or would you rather type of question. Could AI ever develop empathy? It is possible that AI could be developed to have empathy in the future but it is not clear how this would be accomplished. It can also answer follow-up questions, challenge incorrect premises, and even admit when it's made a mistake, which it sometimes does. And unlike some previous chatbots, it's been trained not to turn into a raging racist. Do you think AI is how we'll soon be interacting with the internet? And should everyone in customer service be worried? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The largest computer chip company in the world is making a massive bet on the United States. Taiwan's TSMC just pledged to invest $40 billion in its U.S. plants. That's billion with a B, folks. It's one of the biggest foreign direct investments in U.S. history. The company initially announced a $12 billion investment for an Arizona plant in 2020. Now it's set to add a second plant which will produce more advanced chips. When completed, the factories could meet all of America's demand for domestically made microchips, which would add some much needed supply chain resilience. 
Do you think this deal might help cool some of our recession concerns people have about the US economy? Let us know in the comments and make sure you're following the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. A-list celebrities including Madonna, Justin Bieber, Kevin Hart, Jimmy Fallon and Serena Williams are being sued over their involvement with Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs. Bring on to the other side. The proposed federal class action suit alleges the stars promoted the non-fungible tokens without declaring they had financial interests in Yuga Labs, the company behind them. In one example, Jimmy Fallon did a segment on The Tonight Show where he chatted about his own Bored Ape Yacht Club purchase. This is my ape. Yours. Yours is so cool. I love the Red Heart sunglasses. The lawsuit claims it was actually a paid advertisement. The suit calls the star's actions fraud. It definitely doesn't help that some people's investments are now only worth about 10% of their original value. Do you think celebs should have to reveal when they're benefiting from something they're endorsing? Seems like common sense, but maybe that's just me. Let us know in the comments and follow The Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Action role-playing epic Elden Ring took home the coveted Game of the Year prize at the annual Game Awards in Los Angeles. They're basically the Oscars for video games. Along with the top prize, it also won Best Game Direction, Best Art Direction, and Best Role-Playing Game. But arguably, the biggest winner of the night was God of War Ragnarok. It snagged six awards, including Best Action Adventure Game, Best Narrative, and Best Performance. Of course, that wasn't all people were talking about. Just like at the actual Oscars, there was some drama. I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed Orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. In this case, a stage crasher who many viewers thought made an anti-Semitic statement. Suddenly, the slap doesn't seem quite so bad anymore. Wow! But getting back to the subject at hand, what do you think was the best game of 2022? Tell us in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Elon Musk was embarrassingly booed off stage at Dave Chappelle's comedy show on Sunday in San Francisco. <laughs> Chappelle told the crowd of 18,000 or so people to make some noise for the world's richest man. And maybe they were expecting current richest man Bernard Arnault. Because when Elon Musk appeared on stage, he got booed long and hard. Chappelle tried to get the crowd back with jokes, but to no avail. So eventually, he ended up scolding them, and that didn't go great either. But you know it's one thing, all those people are booing, and I'm just, I'm just pointing out the obvious, they have terrible seats. Of course, it's possible Elon Musk got the last laugh. On Monday, Twitter dissolved the Trust and Safety Council. That's the advisory group of roughly 100 human rights and other organizations that was formed in 2016 to address hate speech and other problems on the platform. Enjoy that flex, Elon. So given everything Elon Musk has done lately, would you boo or cheer him on given the chance? Let us know in the comments down below and make sure you're following The Bikini Report for more daily headlines. If you've got a side hustle and take digital app payments, listen up! New IRS rules mean you're going to have to now declare them. And thanks to the gig economy, this could affect millions of people. In the past, apps like Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, and Zelle only notified the IRS of users who had over 200 commercial transactions totaling over $20,000. New regulations mean that the apps will have to report any transaction over $600. Not that it matters, right? Because of course you've always been paying taxes on your business income, right? What do you think about this new lower threshold for paying tax on digital payments? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Eight individuals are facing criminal charges as well as civil charges over a pump and dump stock scheme carried out on social media one that earned them fraudulent profits of over $100 million. 
Basically, these men, and they were all men, would buy stocks that encouraged their over 1.5 million followers on Twitter and Discord to buy the same ones. Then when prices were up, the accused would sell without disclosing that, leaving their dupes holding the bag. Individually, they're facing a variety of charges, but all eight have been charged with conspiracy to commit securities fraud, which means they could be looking at 25 years in prison. Will hearing about this make you less likely to trust online sources for financial advice? Or is it just a matter of doing your homework? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Dictionary.com has announced their word of the year for 2022, and it's woman. Kind of underwhelming, right? They said their choice reflected, and I quote, how the intersection of gender, identity, and language dominates the current cultural conversation and shapes much of its work as a dictionary. Searches for women jumped as much as 1,400% during Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson's confirmation hearing when she was asked to define it. And of course, that was sparked by the ongoing discussion of transgender rights and what it actually means to be a woman. No confusion here, but I guess quite a few people need an explanation. What do you think about Dictionary.com's Word of the Year? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The founder of the now collapsed crypto exchange FDX, Sam Bankman Fried, is facing multiple charges in the US over what prosecutors are calling one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. And after being arrested in the Bahamas on Monday, he was just denied bail in a Bahamian court. Bankman Fried was pleading with the court to grant him bail and put him under house arrest at his multi million dollar penthouse. He argued that his vegan diet and ADD would not serve him well in prison. Guess that wasn't a convincing argument because the magistrate thought he would be a flight risk and denied him bail. There is one flight that Bankman Fried is working hard to avoid, however. He's currently fighting his extradition to the US and will now be held in a ruthless Bahamian jail until his next hearing on February 8th. The criminal charges awaiting him stateside include money laundering, wire fraud, and conspiracy to defraud, and not surprisingly, there are civil charges too. Do you agree with the court's decision to deny him bail? Let us know in the comments and make sure to like and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The US Space Force may not have conquered space just yet, but it has launched its first command unit on foreign soil. This foreign command is being set up at Osan Air Base in South Korea, where it'll be able to better monitor possible missile threats from North Korea. It could also at some point be called upon to deal with China and Russia's developing anti-satellite technology. Steve Carell sitcoms aside, it might be time to start taking Space Force seriously. That said, are you worried about the militarization of space, or is it relatively low on your list of things to worry about? Be sure to let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Be careful everyone, it's flu season and not just for people. Many states including California, Florida, New York and Texas are reporting outbreaks of dog flu, or canine influenza if you're fancy. Dog flu is prone to outbreaks for a variety of reasons. Virus particles can travel up to 20 feet, last on surfaces such as food bowls for up to two days, and continue to be shed for up to four weeks. On top of that, 20% of dogs who catch it will be asymptomatic, which is why it so often makes its way into kennels. It's estimated that around 80% of exposed dogs will get the dog flu. Symptoms to look for are much like those for the human variety. Persistent cough, runny nose, fever, lethargy, and so on. So keep your eyes open. Will knowing about these outbreaks change your plans for man's best friend over the holidays? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. New Zealand wants to fully phase out smoking by banning young people from buying cigarettes for life. The country just passed a new law that bans the sale of tobacco to anyone born on or after January 1st, 2009. Yes, that means anyone born after then will never be legally able to smoke. 
the legislation also cuts the amount of nicotine permitted in smoked tobacco products and slashes the number of licensed tobacco retailers by 90%. Health authorities say this will save billions in health care costs and leave a legacy of better health for youth. Of course, opponents say it's just a nanny state prohibition that'll lead to a black market. What do you say? Will the new law reduce smoking in the long run, or will it just make it seem even cooler? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. It's just gotten more expensive to take a gun to airport security. Not that anyone should be doing that in the first place. The TSA is raising the penalty for people found with guns in their carry-on bags after a record 6,301 firearms have been found this year. That despite guns being banned in carry-on luggage, even for people with concealed carry permits, and despite reminders of that fact being posted all over airports. Clearly, the message isn't getting through to gun owners. Now, violators will be fined up to $14,950 and have their pre-check eligibility revoked for at least five years. And depending on local laws, they could also be arrested. Do you think this is enough to deter people from packing their firearms in their luggage? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The UN Biodiversity Summit in Montreal has just struck a historic deal that could be very good news for our planet. The deal aims to protect 30% of the planet's nature by 2030. The nearly 200 countries agreed to work towards halting and reversing biodiversity loss and to restore 30% of already degraded areas. The draft also contains commitments for paying for the efforts, including a target of getting $200 billion yearly from public and private sources. It also pledges that rich countries will triple their existing funding to developing countries to help their efforts. Do you think this is enough to help save the planet? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The Caribbean country of Jamaica just declared a state of emergency. The popular vacation destination is trying to get crime there under control by empowering authorities to arrest people and conduct searches without a warrant. The hope is that this will help the country's fight against alarming levels of violence and gang-related crime. The situation is dire enough that the U.S. State Department has issued a Level 3 travel advisory for Jamaica, warning Americans to reconsider travel there. This is all bad news for Jamaica, where tourism makes up close to a third of its gross domestic product. Do you take into account travel advisories from government when deciding on places to visit? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. The race is on to see if Avatar The Way of Water can make its money back. It had opening weekend grosses of $134 million domestically and $435 million globally. Let's get it done. That's the third biggest global opening since the pandemic. But director James Cameron has been clear that this sequel needs to earn $2 billion just to break even. Even Spider-Man No Way Home, which had the biggest pandemic opening, fell short of that total. Plus, China's box office isn't what it used to be, and this movie's three hour plus running time could discourage multiple viewings. It is worth noting, however, that the original Avatar and Titanic both had relatively small openings, but actually built their audiences over time. So, do you think Avatar 2 is going to reach its 2 billion mark? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. Donald Trump's tax filings are about to go public. The House Ways and Means Committee, which is still under Democratic control, voted along party lines to release some of Trump's tax records. Much of this personal information will be redacted, but it's expected we'll be seeing six years of personal tax returns, as well as those for several affiliated companies. Republicans who voted against sharing this info with the public cited privacy concerns, while the Democrats cited transparency and the rule of law. In addition to Trump breaking precedent by refusing the release of his records, the committee's report shows evidence that the Trump administration disregarded a decades-old IRS requirement to audit a president's tax filings. So do you think there'll be any new revelations from this, or at this point is this much ado about nothing? Comment below and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines. 
Elon Musk says he's following through with his promise to resign as Twitter's CEO. You probably remember that he polled users asking if he should step down and vowed he'd abide by the results. And over 57% of people voted that he should step down. Now, he's tweeted that he'll resign as CEO as soon as he can, quote, find someone foolish enough to take the job. And that actually might be tough. Twitter's been hemorrhaging money, plus, as the site's owner, Musk would undoubtedly still be a major influence. But with that said, some of the names being floated around as possibilities range from Twitter's co-founder and former CEO Jack Dorsey, to former Facebook CEO Sheryl Sandberg, to Donald Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner. Do you think Musk will actually hand over control of his new toy? Let us know in the comments and follow the Bikini Report for more daily headlines.